So this is a, this is a, a very interesting problem that we've come across in the last few years. Uh, one of the easiest ways to think about this one is you come into a conference room, four or five people come into a conference room, and you play what we affectionately call pass the spigot. Okay, which is, can I have the wire? Can I have the wire? Can I have the wire? Right? Uh, so they can get access to the projector. That problem actually extends even further if you think about the education market. So I got a call uh, this week from a, a guy who said, you know, I'm from a certain city in the United States and I'm the IT director for the school district. And um, I have a thousand classrooms. And all of my teachers are now starting to carry laptops. And I'm starting to install flat panels and whiteboards that are, that are into all of these specific areas. And I need some way of getting their laptops to the whiteboard and to the monitors. But, number one, I can't run any more infrastructure, okay? Some of, the, some of my school buildings are built out of cinder block, okay? I can't run <laughs> cabling, okay? And by the way, it doesn't make much sense to run cabling anymore. I should be able to do this wirelessly. How do I handle this scenario? What I want them to be able to do is walk into a classroom, see, see something wireless there, and automatically connect to it. Can you help me? And these are basically the same two problems. So what we've done to handle this problem is we've got a solution that we call QuickLink, which is a software solution that sits on top of the wireless USB stuff we've been talking about. So what I've got here is I've got a laptop. And this laptop is actually right now connected to a wireless projector. You can see that up there. That's the wireless adapter. And it's big, and I, I used a big one so everybody could see it. It could obviously be a lot smaller. And it's connected into the projector up here, which is projecting over that way. Okay? So, what you see on this thing is you see that it's connected to the NEC projector and it is not connected to a second projector, right? Okay. Another guy, another person walks into the room. This is the other person. Okay, what does this person see? Well, this person sees the second projector because it can connect to it, but it can't see the first one because the first guy is already using the first one. So, logically speaking then, what we should say is, I want the spigot. Give it to me. So let's go ahead and do that, and we'll have the first guy disconnect. So he's going to disconnect, the projector goes off, all that stuff, and you can see that that happens. And since these are scanning, we can't time it exactly, but you can see there that now both of them are disconnected. Okay? And when this guy comes around in his scan, okay, he will find the other projector and say that one's available and he should pop up here momentarily. It just depends where he is in his scanning cycle, how long it actually takes to do. Okay. How often does it scan? It scans through all the channels. We have, because the ultra wide band has a broad range of channels and it has to scan through all of the channels before it gets there. Right. So, there he goes. He just popped up and now he sees both of them, right? So, what he would normally do, I'm going to use this, the same laptop, but what he would normally do is say, okay, I'm going to take the projector. So all he has to do is go back over here and click on the blue button. He clicks on the blue button, okay, and then what will happen is he will automatically connect up to this projector, so he becomes connected again. And then again over here what you will see is slowly over time, this will fade out. Okay, it fades to gray. Right now it still hasn't found out that it's not, it's been taken. Then it will fade to gray, and then it will disappear from that system because you can't, it's already gray now, and then it will go away because you can't touch it anymore. So it's a very easy way of walking into a room, connecting up to something, disconnecting back and forth. You can use it in classrooms, you can use it in conference rooms. Um, you could either play past the, leave a dongle like this sitting in a room because it's driverless, right? Yeah. So as we said, you don't need to do anything. You leave a dongle sitting there, everybody comes in, pass me the little dongle, yeah. or if it's built in, you don't even yeah, need that. I was just about like to mention it. Just walk like back and forth. So for a school district, it's great, right? You walk into a classroom and it says class 101, 102. The other thing is, is, you know, it's not as secure, but it's much faster and easier and simple way of connecting up without having to know 192.168.1.1, yeah. which by the way is not equal to 169.192.1.1. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so it's a simple way of actually at you know connecting into a network, doing something real quick. We call it session based, right? A one-time connection or a, a, a temporary connection that you're setting up and then leaving for. I can definitely see this in, in, in a bundle package for, for, oh, yeah, for school districts. For school districts, e and like I said, they can for colleges, buy the for laptop classrooms, with the built -in, it makes the projectors it makes it and really, really easy. simple. Really right. simple. That's, that's, that's so you don't have great. to pair with the device. You don't have to do anything. 
taking all the work out of it. Right. They just have to name the projector, you know, the projectors and know, know right. where to go, and that's it. Exactly. Exactly. That's awesome. Okay. I think that's about it. I think that's everything, everything I've got to show you today. Thank you very much.